Hello everyone, we are doing module 4 on snoop based multiprocessor design. This is lecture number 7 and we are continuing the discussion on split transaction bus. In this lecture, we are going to look at different phases of the split transaction bus. Okay. So, when I split the transaction into two parts, I have a request phase and a response phase. So, two things to do and they happen independently in time. So, to do these two things independently, I have uh, to manage the resources that is how do I do the bus design. First is for the sending the request, I need uh, a bus for which I will ask for permission. So, that is the request bus and on this request bus, we are going to give the address and the command what has to be done. Then when this address and command goes onto the bus, there will be other processors and cache controllers that is the snoopers sitting there as well as the memory who will see this uh, request passing through and they have to take appropriate action. Subsequently in future a response will be generated, responses are mainly acknowledgements and data transfer. So you need a separate bus for sending the response because your request bus could be at this moment being used by somebody else. Okay, So you need another set of wires to send your response Okay, and then the responses are out of order. So if the response is out of order, you need to have a matching ID or a tag associated with the request because uh, when you send a request the response comes much later so the response should carry information about which request it corresponds to. So how do we do this? It depends on the number of pending requests. So if I can handle 8 pending requests then I need 3 bit information to identify the response and the request matching. So all these information the bus has to handle. So the bus is now divided into uh, an address bus which is the blue color, the command bus which is the green line, then the data response. Okay, So we need this and in addition you also need a 3 bit tag because uh, you have to use this to match the request with the response and then the snoop results. Okay, So uh, this is the complete uh, structure of my bus. Initially, we had clubbed the address and the data together and we were worried only about the snoop values. There was no tag field, but now we have the smart infrastructure to uh, handle. Okay. Then the data response phase, it depends on uh, what is the size of the block we are transferring and therefore it is architecture specific. Because we are discussing SGI challenge and if I say my blocks are 128 bytes, which is 1024 bits. So I need to transfer 1024 bits on the bus and my bus is 256 bit wide. So you are going to take 4 trips to do this work. Okay. So over 4 clock cycles, you are going to send 1024 bits. Now when we send these 4 cycles, the 5th cycle cannot be immediately used for the next data, but it has to be left vacant or blank as a turnaround time. So the technology requires a single cycle turnaround time. Hence, I am going to need 4 for data transfer, 1 for turnaround making it 5 cycles of a data response. So this is my requirement for the response and because uh, response is taking 5 cycles, I have to make sure that can I fit my request also in 5 okay? so that if everything is taking same time, we can have a pipeline uh, behavior established. So we will see this as an example in detail. Okay? So what are we going to do? We are going to see how the address request is generated. Then we discussed the data response in the previous slide. But before I send the data response, if you go back here, the 5 cycles of the data response are used only for transferring data, but you cannot transfer data right away. You need to take permission to send the data that is bus arbitration has to be required. Then the receiver should be ready to accept the data. So all this homework has to be done before I can do this and that is done as part of the data request. So the response is actually combined with a request on the data bus followed by the data transfer. Okay, So these are the three things we have to look at. Okay, So now coming back to the address request which is a 5 cycle phase. Okay, So what happens in this address request that is what happens in those 5 cycles. The first cycle we are going to arbitrate for the bus. 
and in the second cycle we may get the bus that is the bus grant so when the bus grant comes it comes with a tag assigned to this request because the bus controller knows what are the ids of the uh, pending request and it will give you a id for your new request once you get the tag id you have to put the address onto the bus and the command so when you put the address and the command onto the bus in the third clock cycle this travels onto the bus later fourth cycle this request is traveling other caches read this request and they will now compare this address with their caches right you have to do a bus snoop so you will compare your cache you will uh, take an appropriate decision that is should this cache reply with data should this cache invalidate the block or should it ignore the request okay so all this uh, the processing is done in the decode that is the fourth cycle so end of fourth cycle you would know that is every processor connected to the bus will know whether they should stay in the same state or they have to change the state at the same time they will also know whether they are supposed to supply the data or memory will give the data okay so all this happens in the fourth cycle in case the some processor is busy doing uh, processing of the cache and it is not able to finish its snoop okay because it's very ambitious to say that you finished your answer in one clock cycle if it is not able to do this there is the fifth cycle so in the fifth cycle it probably finishes or it can prolong the fifth cycle that is it will not send an acknowledgement onto the bus saying that i am taking more time please wait don't finish the request phase okay so the fifth cycle is elongated beyond five cycles until all processors finish the snoop okay so these are the five cycles arbitrate resolve uh, put the address decode the address during decode all the snoop information is ready uh, state changes are recorded they are not uh, may or may not be done depends on uh, the protocol but you would know that should you shift from e to s or m to s and the fifth cycle is the ag cycle okay so you can extend this if you haven't finished the snoop okay then next is the data request and then the data response data response is sending the data but before sending the data you have to get permission so five cycles first cycle arbitrate now here i am arbitrating for the data bus right so you are arbitrating for the data bus you will get the bus second cycle once you get the bus what should you send here third cycle we put the address of the block we are interested in and the command in the data request which is the address cycle i am not going to put the address but i am going to put the tag okay so if the request went for address 5000 but the response will not come for address 5000 but the response will come for the message id or message number 3 okay so pending request id will be used here instead of the address and why do we do this why not the address because at uh, if you want to send the address then the address lines here the address bus is common the address lines will now be in use by another request okay so address lines are dedicated to request hence you cannot reuse them for your data responses so therefore we are going to use the tag lines in the third cycle put the tag and once you put the tag this tag reaches everybody uh, and then the receiver if receiver is ready to take the data it can indicate so and therefore we have one empty cycle here and once the receiver indicates that it is ready to receive it will start sending the data in the fifth clock cycle okay so fifth cycle we actually start sending data so the first 256 bits of your block right we had a block 1024 this was the block size had to be sent in four pieces so the first piece is d0 d1 d2 d3 right so that is the amount of data i have to send and i have to keep one uh, empty cycle here as a turnaround time so among the data the first uh, chunk of 256 bits is sent in the fifth cycle of the data request what about the others these now these three will be sent in the data response because response is only for sending the data and the bus is already acquired okay so because we've already sent d0 what we start from here is 1 2 and 3 the first cycle d1 
second cycle D2, third cycle D3. So you have finished sending all the four chunks and then you have a empty, okay. See D1, D2, D3 and empty. So four cycles of the next phase are covered up by this. So four cycles done. Now what happens in the fifth cycle? The fifth cycle, the D0 of the subsequent block can start moving because uh, on the data bus. So data request phase does not use uh, the data bus, so it only uses the tag, data response uses the data bus, okay. Along with this, what about the snoop? The snoop results which you have computed will now be conveyed as part of the response on the separate snoop lines, okay. You have data bus lines and then snoop lines on which the snoop results will go. We will now see an example of the split transaction bus as to exactly how the various phases get used. So here I am assuming that uh, processor P1 has the block and uh, processor P2 wants to get that. So overall we want P1 processor to send the data to P2. So this is the operation which will happen eventually. All right, so because P2 wants the block, it is going to send a bus read request. So this read request will go uh, during the first address request phase. So it will start from here. So P2 sends the address request on the bus. So it uh, first puts the request, it uh, eventually gets a grant. So we are assuming it gets the bus grant. Once it gets the bus grant, it puts the address of the block B in the third clock cycle. Okay, so you keep matching the clock cycles, address request cycle 1, address uh, request grant cycle 2 and it puts the address in cycle number 3. So correspondingly these 3 actions take place. After that the 4th cycle is the decode cycle. So during this decode cycle the address has already gone onto the bus and here P1 will actually see the block. That is it sees the address. Uh, passing onto the bus and it realizes that yes it has the block and it should be providing the block. So P1 realizes it has to take an action and then uh, sends an acknowledgement on the bus. So during clock cycle 4 we decode it and the decode happens that is the address comparison happens uh, with the address passing onto the bus with the address stored inside P1. So P1 does a uh, cache tag comparison for that particular address. Once there is a cache hit and it realizes it is supposed to supply the data block, it sends an acknowledgement in cycle 5. In case P1 takes more time to do the tag comparison, it can extend the ACK cycle that is it waits for one more clock cycle and then sends an acknowledgement. So this way P1 can say that it is now uh, prepared to give the data block to P2. So this ends the address request phase. So address request phase finishes here. What happens next? So next is actually P1 has to start giving the data. So data uh, gets sent in the data request as well as data response uh, phases. So data request phase will start from cycle number 6. Okay, so P1 starts sending the data from cycle 6. So here we are in cycle 6. This is the position where P1 sends a request for the data bus. It will get a grant. So we will assume that uh, it gets the grant for the bus. And once it gets the grant, it has to uh, send the tag. So in the address phase, that is the third clock cycle, it uh, has to put the tag onto the bus. Why the tag? Because P2 sent the address. And when P2 sent the address, uh, a tag was associated with this particular request. So I, we can say that when the bus was granted, a tag was associated with this uh, request and I am assuming suppose the tag is a 3 bit uh, number 100. Okay? So I am assuming tag 100 gets assigned to this particular transaction. So P1 puts this tag here that is it puts the tag 100 in cycle 8. So when this tag uh, goes onto the bus, P2 who is supposed to receive the data will check the tag because P2 wanted the data with the transaction ID 100. When 100 response is coming, P2 
P2 indicates that it is now ready to receive the data. Right. So here I would say that P2 shows uh, willingness to receive the data right if p2 is busy then uh, this uh, transaction cannot happen so p2 shows willingness to accept the data and therefore p1 can start sending the data from the act cycle that is the 10th cycle here so because the target is ready so we start sending the data from cycle number 10 okay so as you know the data goes in uh, four pieces so d0 goes in cycle 10 and then we use the remaining clock cycles for sending the other pieces of the data so d1 d2 d3 go and then uh, we have clock cycle 14 which is kept empty for the turnaround time so cycle 14 is empty for the turnaround time what happens in cycle 15 as you can see the color code is different so here this cycle will be used by another data transfer so this is uh, not for this particular transaction. So another transactions data transfer can take place here. Okay, so this way uh, what happened is P1 has the data block, P2 requested the data block and P1 provided the data block. Okay, So if I quickly demarcate it in the slide, you can see this portion is when p2 sends the request okay then from 6 to 10 and also from 11 onwards so this is the phase when p1 sends the data okay so this is the red color transaction so one color so if i quickly change the color for seeing another type of uh, actions happening so let's take this case at clock cycle 6, another processor pair wants to communicate. So here P3 wants the block from P4. So P4 has to send the block to P3. So P4 wants to send the block to P3. That is P3 has to send the request. So the request starts uh, from clock cycle 6. So here P3 sends the request of the address. It gets the grant and then it puts the address. Let's say it's for block number C. Okay, so let's say it's uh, communication is for block number C. So when it gets the grant, it also gets a tag assigned to it. And if we say the tag is 110 or 101. So we had let the previous one was 100. So I'll call this 101. So the next transactions new tag gets assigned. Uh, the address of the block C gets put in the third clock cycle. And then the same thing decoders when the sender that is P4 P4 checks the address and decides that it has to send the data block. Okay, So P4 during clock cycle 9 and 10 decides that it is uh, supposed to supply the data block and then sends the acknowledgement. Once the acknowledgement is sent, the role of P3's request is completed. So after P3 finishes its uh, request, P4 has to send the data which it will start doing from clock cycle 11 onwards. So first it requests for the data bus. During clock cycle 11, eventually it will get a grant. It puts the tag that is 101 in this case and then uh, proceeds to send the data from this cycle. Okay, so this is the request when P4 sends the data. So P4 starts sending the data uh, from that particular clock cycle. Okay, uh, so with this you can see that we have uh, multiple transactions happening at the same time so as you can see in clock cycle 6 uh, p3 is sending a request for a data item at the same time on the data bus p1 is now trying to get the data bus to put its data which will be then consumed by p2 so two parallel transactions are happening here if i go further uh, in clock cycle 11 if you realize there will be three more transactions happening because probably a new request uh, would be passing through here then you have the green color transaction sending the request on the data bus and the red one which is actually sending the data on the data bus okay so this way we can establish parallelism multiple transactions are happening together okay so if i continue the same example uh, at clock cycle 15 that is here the actual data transfer starts but if the receiver 
which was the receiver if I go back to the previous slide let us see what was the receiver it was uh, P3 okay here we said P3 receives data but if P3 is not ready okay so if P3 is not ready to receive data what should it do okay this is not related to snoop when snoop is not ready you have to extend the act cycle this is the extension for snoop but when you are not ready to receive the data you have to uh, again not send the acknowledgement. So, you have to raise a signal that you are not ready to receive the data. So, this signal is seen by the sender in this case P4. So, P4 can see the signal and then st stop sending or it will not start sending the data to P3. Okay. So, P4 wants to send data to P3, P3 says I am not ready so P4 waits. Okay. So, this is how uh, transactions can happen in parallel only thing is we have to take care that there are no conflicting transactions uh, in one go all right. So, this is uh, another example you can give it a try or revise that concept by trying to send a bus read or a bus read x what happens in a bus upgrade okay. So, you can use this as a template to understand the flow of transactions all right. So, we have done the basic, so we have done the basic uh, read write things. Now, the other two things left is write back and a bus upgrade. So, when you do a write back, write back block is you send the data that is part of the request. Is there a response? There is no response. Okay, so no response comes, but to send the data as part of the request phase, request phase only has access to the address bus. Okay, you do not have the data bus, data bus access is only acquired during the data response phase okay so in this case the write back has to arbitrate both the buses together the same processor arbitrates both buses together in the previous examples there were disjoint processors asking for the bus here the same uh, processor asks so same processor requests both buses once it gets both together only then it uh, starts the write back otherwise it doesn't send that is how write back is handled then in bus upgrade as we said when a bus upgrade is only a request and there is no response so the same bus controller sends a response to its own cache that yes i have succeeded in putting the request onto the bus so you can proceed with writing so putting the request onto the bus is like committing the transaction and saying that it is serialized okay so these two requests bus uh, upgrade and the write back write back acquire both buses simultaneously and in bus upgrade the same bus controller sends you the response and we assume that the write is committed when it gets the bus right. So, we have tried to understand how a split transaction bus works what are the three different phases we had a address request phase we had a data request phase and a data response at a time three different transactions can be in one of these phases and everything happens in parallel okay so with this we finish this lecture thank you so much mm -hmm.